are at row 66, and when we consult our sweater blueprint, we find out that 66 is the beginning of our shoulder shaping. Now notice that there aren't any measurements here, and that's because for television I had to simplify it. Your blueprint has all the information that it needs. We are going to bind off in two steps on each side of the shoulder, seven stitches each time. This is partial knitting, and I did sort of fudge. This is the only skill that I am going to repeat from Meet Your Bond. Because partial knitting and taking the back of the neck off on waist yarn is a lot of steps in sequence, I want to repeat it for you one more time so that you begin to establish that sequence in your head. This time, we're going to start again on the side opposite the carriage. We have seven stitches. I will run a little bit faster than we did in Meet Your Bond. I'm going to put seven stitches into holding position. Four, six, seven, and knit across. I will put one more needle into holding position to prevent a hole from forming, move my claw weight, go to the opposite side of the carriage where I will put seven more stitches into holding position needles into holding position and knit back. One more into holding position, move that claw weight to the edge of your knitting. And seven again, but one has already been put out, it's the one with the wrap, so six more. Two, four, six. Knit across. This is already the back of my neck, so I'm not going to put another one out for a wrap. Instead, I'm going to put two, four, six. And now we're going to come to the moment of truth where I'm going to look at my numbers and, aha, I have 20 stitches in the back of my neck, which if you look at your sweater blueprint is exactly what you're supposed to have. And I'm going to put waist yarn on these. If you remember a little discussion in Meet Your Bond, when you do a child sweater, they have such chunky little heads and they wail in protest, especially when they're about this size, which is about a size three, if you put something tight over their heads. So we're going to leave this nice and open, loose stitches. Let's see, we'll leave that there. Move the carriage over until the eye stops between the last needle in holding position and the first working position. Lay your yarn all the way down. Grab on for the first couple of stitches. Might want to hang a little weight there. And knit a couple rows back and forth. If anything jams, it's because there's not much weight up here and you need to tug down on it and it'll get it in better shape. Okay, I'll set my waist yarn over here. Anyway, if, for adult sweaters, I highly recommend that you bind off across the back of the neck regardless of what the pattern tells you. And children's sweaters, you leave nice and loose and open and don't bind off. Push that out of the way. We're ready to go on with our last row on this shoulder. This shoulder, because look where our working yarn is. We want to make it easiest for ourselves. Now you can see I'm moving a lot more quickly, and I'm assuming that you got this in Meet Your Bond. Okay, I'm going to feed that right back through the eye of the carriage. I'm going to push those needles into half knit position and knit my one last row across. <clears throat> I am done with this shoulder. I'm going to cut a nice long end so that we can knit it together later. And I'm going to pick up my waist yarn. Don't get overzealous here with your waist yarn. It's so much fun. You get, to, oh, the shoulder is done. I can just drop this right off, but everything goes screaming and yelling and falling down. So make sure when you finish this waist yarn that you remember to put those back into oops, holding position. The disadvantage to wearing sweaters while you're knitting on the bond. We'll get it out of the way. These go back into holding position. Make or half knit position. Make sure all those latches are open. It becomes so automatic with you, you would not think of running a yarn carriage. Actually, you have to um, drop a few stitches, and then you won't think about running that carriage over without checking those latches automatically. It becomes very routine. Snip this. It's going to become the yarn that we we'll use for our seam. Insert our waist yarn, and knit three or four rows. Here we have it, folks, a completed back 
with the sh two shoulders and the back of the neck on waist yarn. Do not remove the hem when you stop this step. I want you to shape the shoulders and back of the neck on your sample. I want you to remove all three sections on waist yarn and I want you to leave the weighted hem on because we're going to rehang for the bottom rib.